you know, the first time that I went there and I was a bit intimidated, like, oh man, fuck, I'm going to get the electric board out, everyone's here, like, oh, this is a bit crazy, like, I was a bit overwhelmed with it. What's up, guys? We are back with another episode of the Eastgate Chat Podcast. And on this one, we got a local legend, Brett Lorenzo. You flip, I film, electric skateboarding. Online, you go by a couple names. Do you want to tell me a bit about, I guess, let's start, go all the way back to when you first started electric skateboarding. How long ago was that? Oh, I'd say mid-2014, yeah, around then. Um, it was funny, actually, because the first time I got offered to go on an electric skateboarding, I had a very core skateboarding mentality and was like, ah, oh, man, nah, that's that's not my vibe, you know what I mean? And, and then kind of I eventually jumped on it and I actually got thrown straight off. My foot went into the wheel and, yeah, I got throttled the first time, so. Man, I'll tell you what, the amount of skaters, like, actual good skaters that crash the first time they go on it's like quite a lot because they're going with so much confidence but they're also comfortable enough on the board that they stand and they don't really try and compensate for the acceleration or the braking yeah, yeah and they, sure. they go flying off it i've seen it so many times yeah definitely no you're, you're 100 right and yeah i think it's that whole that skateboarding mentality where you give them the controller and they just hold it full ping that's the that's the way of what skateboarding is, you know what I mean? You go all in. And, yeah, I've seen so many guys wipe out, and I always warn the boys, like, man, be careful because this is a, this is gnarly. Like, you know what I mean? They don't understand it <clears throat> until – like, you can't comprehend what it's like coming off at 40-plus until you've done it, you know what I mean? And, yeah, it's not the same kind of thing, so. Yeah, so you were obviously a, a traditional skateboarder, before all this electric stuff started were you core park and street that sort of style yeah well i grew up skating street and then i got injured in like my first comp i lined up a whole bunch of comps and i tore my acl in my in the first comp and then yeah i was pretty much out before i began and um and then i got back into it through filming and that's where you flip by film <clears throat> comes from because i was filming with one of my, my mates jamie and I was just heckling him, oh, mate, do a kickflip, do a kickflip. And he was, you know, yelling back at me, you do a kickflip, mate. And I said, oi, bud, you flip, I film. And that was kind of around the time when, you know, I didn't really have an Instagram and I got one and I was like, oh, well, I don't want it to be my name. It's got to be like a something, an alias or whatever it is. But you know what I mean? So that's where that you flip, I film comes from is just having fun with my mates and heckling each other. But, yeah, and then those boys that I was filming – all skated transition so um yeah i got into skating transition and diy and stuff like that and yeah it's a it's a good culture because everyone kind of will just sit around and drink some beers and kind of you know go on mate get it you got it and just kind of hype each other up you know what i mean where street skating is a bit more kind of underground and a bit more lucrative and you know everyone's doing their own thing and it's not the same vibe so I got to experience kind of both sides of, of that. But, yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah. Coming into eSkate from the skate background, I think you approach it with like a, a different outlook than a lot of riders who get in through just because they, you know, see oh, someone else sure. e-skating. What do you think are the main differences coming in from like a park skate mentality? Well, yeah, look, when I first started riding the electric boards, like I was saying – um, I, yeah, my mate, he actually, well, what happened was um, Joel Parkinson was doing this backside, he did a backside 360 and he grabbed the rail, right? And then my mate, Jay, who was um, running the team for FIC, he actually was going, oh, mate, I can do 180s and where's your 180s? Parko's doing 360s and, you know, as a skateboarder, you're always chasing like that trick that no one's ever done at that spot or you're always trying to do something some you know it's about being creative you know what i mean so and then for me it became about trying to chase traditional skateboarding tricks you know what i mean and just like that i got obsessed with it yeah so it was just because of other people that were pushing the boundaries and 
I, I just naturally went, oh, well, you know, and I got super addicted to it and and it just hasn't stopped, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's good fun. Yeah. I remember seeing videos of you like years ago, like maybe five, six, seven years ago where you were doing tricks on these electric boards and yes, some people have started getting into it in more recent years, but it's not mainstream. Like we're, we're not seeing a lot of people actually trying to trick them. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. What, what do you think the progression is going to be of people trying to push the limits of these boards outside of just going fast in a straight line? Well, I think um, Andy Mack actually was probably one of the big people to take the traditional skateboarding into the limelight on electrics because you know he was doing like crazy stuff he was doing like air walks and all this kind of stuff and i think it's one of those things where when you give these boards to skateboarders you got to also remember that there's this line where you've got your cool kids and your open-minded and there's people that hate it and people that love it and then there's the people that are on either side of the fence so as more traditional skateboarders get involved and also the downhill scene, like those guys are really good at doing their power slides. So the more that they get involved, the more that that will grow. But also like your riders, I don't know, like who just ride electrics and don't have any skating background. It's probably a bit harder for these guys because they don't have that experience of like um, of falling because that's one thing in skateboarding that you learn that gives a skateboarder an advantage on an electric because at a high speed, like I've seen some of my mates going 40 plus and just jump off and run. And it's like, man, how do you do that? You know what I mean? Like these guys are insanely good at skateboarding so they can do that. Whereas not everyone who just jumps on an electric board with that, without that background has that ability to bail. And I think that in itself is a big thing. And it's something that, you know, like not everyone's going to be wanting to push the boundaries i think it comes down to more the individual and you know what i mean like the people who have the mentality to go out and go oh i want to do that and you know like you oh there's you get obsessed it's like that obsessive nature to to you know you're trying something 50 times and you covered in blood and you and you're still persisting to get it because you're determined, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think su- surviving a crash is like a fundamental element of progression. Oh, and like yeah. a lot of people that um, get into e-skate, uh, it's, it's a bit of a leisurely thing. It's sort of like, um, I don't know, if you look at bikes, you can get people that go down the beach and go for a little bike ride, which is cool. And then you got people doing triple backflips. So it's – Eastgate's a little bit give and take in like only a small amount of people are going to be searching for that progression. Mm. But I think once that small amount of people starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger and we're seeing it, there's like your electric skateboarding page, you sort of share the best of the best going on in the electric skate world. So it's a great place to go and see this kind of progression. Yeah, for sure. And I've also actually made it a lot easier rather than saying like the best of the best. I've also made it a lot easier like if people just want to collaborate or they tag it in and then it's there for them to share because it's not about like who has the most followers or who's the most popular. It's just about like who's writing and having a good time. And like, it's for everyone, you know, it is a community page. And then like, yeah, it did start kind of that way with like, I was just using it as an outlet for my electric skateboarding stuff because I was filming skateboarding. And back then it wasn't really one of those things where like the skateboarders would look at it like, oh man, why are you riding electric boards? But then the electric skateboarders were like looking at me like, you're a crazy hooligan that doesn't wear a helmet. What are you doing? Do you know what I mean? So it was like, I was in this middle ground and that was just a place for me to put stuff. And then as I found other people's content, I was like, oh, this is rad. Oh, I'm going to put it on my page. And it was just a, a place to promote electric skateboarding and try and make it bigger. And like you said, like, it's the same thing in skateboarding. Like people go down to the Esplanade and ride their skateboard along the Esplanade and they t- I'm going for a skate. And then, you know, there's people that go down to the skate park and then there's people that go to the streets and throw themselves down big handrails. You know what I mean? So there's there's that whole variety of, of what you want out of the board. And in electric skateboarding, I think it's like a life hack where you can bang straight down to the shops and back, don't have to park straight in, straight out. Like it's quick. And then you can ride it to work. 
same thing, no parking, it's easy. And then you can ride it to the skate park, have a skate, jump on your lushy board, do some slides and ride home. So you, you, you have all these aspects and it's just what direction you want to take. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I think that doing the tricks is one of those things is it's for those people who really want to get the most out of their experience and, and really want to have a taste of, cause it, what you are doing when you're learning to do these slides is you're learning to lose control of the board and then regain the control. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's the thing with, I guess, mm, a lot of action sports. Definitely traditional skate is a sense of accomplishment you get from actually landing something, right? That's the same feeling you get from a lot of things, I'm sure. I don't know, freestyle st- soccer is the same thing. If you learn some kick, you get a good feeling of accomplishment. So that's a direction you can take electric skateboarding in to get that if that's what you want out of the product. Oh, most definitely. And also the other thing is what you got to remember is like a lot of people online will say like, oh, why would you do this to this expensive board? Or why would you do that? And I even got that reaction from some skateboarders. They'll be like, oh man, why don't you you just do that on your normal board? And it's like, well, it's not the same. It's, It's the idea of having a board that can do that. You know what I mean? Like, so for example, like, I get a lot of people and they ask me, oh, what electric skateboard should I buy? Or what's the best board? And there's, there's no such thing of like this one board that's, you know what I mean? Like there's so many different boards that have so many different ways of riding, you know what I mean? And that's the good thing about the Evolve boards is you can put streets and you can put off-roads, you know what I mean? But then you've got short boards, you've got big boards, like it just depends how you're going to use it, what you want to use it for. So that's, one of those things where, I don't know. Yeah, it's, well, I guess that's the point of Evolve is the versatility of it. Yeah. The, but either you're going to get three different boards, four different boards, or just get one that comes close to doing everything, but it's not going to be perfect for everything. And especially, I wanted to ask you about this. You put up a video a couple of days ago of you literally grinding a rail on the Hadian on street wheels. Never seen anything like it before. And we reshared it, and there's so many comments of what you just said. How can you do that to your board? Like, what are you doing? Like, it's not for that. But, you, you know, it's it's not like but, something but, you but need to wrap in cotton wool. Yeah, like. I know, and that's the idea of skateboarding that a lot of people who ride ele- – well, not a lot of people who ride electric boards, I shouldn't say that, but a lot of people who aren't core traditional skateboarders, they don't understand is like – so a perfect example of a guy I work with, right, he plays a lot of guitar, Chris, and he said, oh – do you, do you, does it annoy you that you go out and buy this skateboard and then you just wreck it straight away? And I never really thought of it like that because you wreck your shoes, you wreck yourself. You, in skateboarding, it's like, it's thrasher, you know, it's skate and destroy, like you destroy everything. And in electric skateboarding, like when you're going to push those boundaries to try and do things that, like you said, like I had my rail and my kicker and I I'd wanted to do that for a while and I got it out and I did it and yeah, I might scratch the board up, this and that, but I accomplished something, you, you know what I mean? So that is like nothing compared to the accomplishment that I, I, I was like, I wanted to do that and I did it and yeah, sick. Like that's what it's about, you know what I mean? Like, man, you can buy another battery box or you can put new wheels on or you can replace these things, but you can't replace those moments and that joy that it brings to you. Like I can think back years ago to tricks that I did on my skateboard and I can still remember like what it felt like and that, you know what I mean? Like you, no matter how many skateboard decks you've gone through, you, you, you can't buy that feeling. Yeah. You can't replace that. 100%. And at the end of the day, if you're just getting away with scratches, it's it's superficial. Oh, like, yeah, 100%. So I, my, you should see my board. It's covered in all sorts of terrible marks. And it's battle scars. It's memories. It's Yeah, for sure. It, it makes it mine. Um, I love it. Yeah. 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 Um, you you do a lot of stuff where you are riding at a normal skateboard with a lot of traditional skaters. You said earlier you did the electric skateboarding page because back in the day they were, I guess, less friendly or less cohesive between the traditional and electric world. How has that sort of changed when you're down the park now? Um, I, I, I know you get skaters on that board quite often. Yeah, because it's changed because – you man like i said you flip by film it's a heckle bro strange because like obviously there's a lot of different people doing this but 
like there's been a lot of times where I've had guys like, oh, like, oh, you know, kind of giving me grief for it. And I would just be like uh, giving them grief back, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, it's just one of those things where the more, like I've had, I don't know, like I've had, uh, rattle off some few, like Kieran Woolley, Keegan Palmer. I gave both those kids electric skateboarders. They're both the Olympians for Australia. You know what I mean? And like heaps of these kids who've come up, they loved it. And it was one of those things where people were on either side of the fence. So I think as more and more people start to go to that side of the fence, we're like, oh, nah, man. Like, you know, Andy Mack was a great person to be able to help show a lot of core skateboarders like, man, this is actually cool. You know what I mean? Like, cause that's what I was always trying to do, but I never had that platform that he had to stand on and go like, man, look, this is cool. You know what I mean? Like, so it was one of those things where there was people that were open-minded to it. Don't get me wrong. There was a lot of people who were supportive, but then there was also, yeah. But to answer your question, I think it's just a matter of over time, like you said, one person does a trick, someone else wants to do that. So it just becomes like more and more people as these skateboarders are getting them, they're letting their mates have a go. And like what I always do, I always let people have a go on my board and you get more and more people who start going, oh man, yeah, that's pretty cool. Hey, I never, like I, I, I didn't really want to ride it. Like I said, I didn't want to have a go. I was like, nah, fuck that. But as soon as I got on it and my mates started heckling me like, oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, brother? And then it became this, like, oh, oh, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? Like, and I got addicted to it because it's still a skateboard. You know what I mean? It's not. Well, I've always said this when uh, they sort of heckled the different disciplines of skate because, mm-hmm. like, that exists. Take electric out of the picture. Downhill skate, dancing longboards, street skaters, park skaters, transition riders. It's not like they're all getting on super seamlessly. Oh, no, nah, skateboarding is a clicky thing. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So like, it's, yeah, it's not unexpected that you bring these electric things in and it's going to be a similar vibe. But that's that's why you're here, I guess, to because we appreciate like that you are showing all these other people in both sides of the thing a different way to ride and um, have a clear passion for it as well, sharing it and doing the community stuff. That's, that's sick. No, so, I appreciate it. And I, I think it's one of those things as well, like <clears throat> as time as time kind of progressed from when I began, because I remember at this certain event, I remember there was these guys and I could hear them going like, oh man, that fucking, whatever they were saying. And then I heard one of the other guys go, nah, man, he does front rock and rolls on that. And then that was it. And then they were like, oh yeah, let's see a front rock. Let's see a front rock, mate. You know what I mean? And then that, it became like this thing where then I did the front rock and it was like, it wasn't you know what I mean? Like their, their point of view on, oh, that's an electric skateboard. Oh, they're bickering, whatever. It's, you know, it, they kind of change. Like, oh, what? You can do a trick on that? You know what I mean? So I think, you know, like in a lot of people, man, there's there's some crazy people out there doing some crazy stuff. Like, and, and the downhill riders, you know what I mean? Like they're all getting involved now. So yeah, it's just the beginning, bro. It's only going to get bigger. Yeah, it's so funny. Uh, I think you can definitely earn respect from skaters. So, yeah, well, uh, for sure, uh, it's a very respect. I, I made this edit with Tyler, the young fellow that works for us, who shreds, shreds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. goes hard, definitely. but he's also quite good on a skateboard as well. I was talking about hey shreds or skateboard. Yeah, yeah but well, I'm with you. Both, both I'm skateboards, with you. both skateboards, shreds. But I took him to Mudgee Park, which is his local, and there was a, a couple other dudes there on normal boards, and he was like, shit, like I'm rocking off on an electric skateboard, getting filmed. It's kooky as. So the first thing he did before the cameras were even out, out, nah, he got on the electric skateboard and just like sent it, and he was like um, doing these like going up um, – and like manualing from coping to coping and holding it the whole way around and all these skaters the minute he started riding like that they're like fuck yeah yeah fuck yeah, 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 yeah all right sure. yeah definitely but yeah that was the first thing he did he's like i'm gonna stamp a bit of respect on this and then it's not gonna be so bad yeah well man like i've been riding my electric board at pizzy skate park for a long time now and from the like you know the first time that i went there and I was a bit intimidated, like, oh, man, fuck, I'm going to get the electric board out. Everyone's here. Like, oh, this is a bit crazy. Like, I was a bit overwhelmed with it. But now it's just normal, hey, you know what I mean? I took Dylan Bell there. And when we got there, I was like, mate, you reckon you can get something up there? And he, 
Man, he threw it down like first try. And straight away, everyone's like, oh, my God, he shut the bark down. People were like, oh, no, no, you go, you go. You know what I mean? Like, And, yeah, you, you definitely get respect from the skateboarders if you go to the skate park and start doing some stuff at the skate park. As long as you also, like, go there with the mentality, like, you have to also show the respect to get respect. You're like, don't just go in there and start cutting people off. Like, you got to, you know, you kind of got to read the room a bit. Mm. So as long as you can kind of understand. And it also comes down to what park you're at, you know what I mean? But... Man, I was at Venice Beach with Willie Lara riding the board around and, you know, hanging out with the locals there and they loved it. You know what I mean? The game's definitely changed. Like, people are a lot more open-minded these days to back then. I think it's just as as time goes on, it's a domino effect, yeah. more and more people. Interesting point is that we've never really had a generation that grew up with Eastgate because it's quite new. It's right? coming. It's coming, that's what I mean. So what are we going to start seeing? I'm already seeing it in... um like videos popping up of 14 year olds riding like as good as anyone you've ever seen. Oh, so yeah. I'm like, shit, like these guys give them five years and this, they're going to be the best riders out there. Oh mate, there's a photo on my electric skateboarding account of uh, AJ and he ollied seven boards. Cause um, one of the, one of the brands, he ollied seven boards um, and that was the record. Uh, it was done with uh Braley skate. And, yeah, that was the record. So I said to um, AJ, I was like, yeah, let's go, seven boards, you know what I mean? Let's try for eight. But he couldn't get it, and it was, you know, as the session goes on, it was the end of the night kind of thing, and he was over it. But he got seven, and he was the youngest person to do it. But he also hard flipped that board, um, and I didn't even know when he come up to me. Oh, yeah, I hard flipped that. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, mate, you know, you'd be like one of a handful of people to hard flip an electric skateboard. And he's like, oh. And I was, what? these kids, they got some, yeah, they got some game, bro. What do you think could change? Um, I mean, like, look, we're the first one to say our boards are cruisers. Like, we're they're not designed to go to the park. They're not designed to flip. They're not designed to that. jump. <laughs> uh, we're telling everyone that. We're, we're not like um, – it's, it's sort of like you, you buy a bike and if you ride it, like, at the past its limits, shit might break. Oh, yeah, But sure. you know what you're doing when you're doing it. What could – or what would you want out of an electric skateboard to – have more fun in that sort of trick environment because obviously you need smaller and lighter yeah yeah well that's the thing like there's also a line that you draw you know what i mean like yeah i'll do some tricks and stuff on my electric board but there's also a time where i just go like oh i just need to go on my skateboard it's nice and light and agile and stuff like that there's a lot more diverse you know a lot more things you can do on that skateboard so I mean, you can only make an electric skateboard so light and so strong. I don't know. I don't really. Yeah, I guess if it keeps getting lighter and smaller, it's going to get weaker. like weaker mm. to the point where, yeah, you just get on a normal skateboard. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's that counter kind of middle, middle culture. And I think that's the thing as well as like, as you kind of, like I said, there's a different board for every style of riding, but the further on you go down the train towards more like your single kick kind of boards, they don't have as much range. They don't have that power. You know what I mean? Like I ride traditional skateboards, but that's what I love about these Hadians is they're so powerful that I can just fly places and get where I need to go. And I've got the distance. So I don't need to charge. You know what I mean? I'll ride it to work all week and won't even charge it once. And then so you've got these little boards, they don't have that ability where you can get them and go and skate them at the skate park, but you're limited to what you can do on that board. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's a hard one because it just comes down to what you feel like really do. I don't know. That's why I just kind of, I'd rather ride these longer boards than the shorter boards. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Um. When you got your Hadian, I was wondering how you were going to go with this. Was it your first time really getting used to double kingpin trucks, is it? Yeah, well, I had a double kingpin truck direct drive board before this. Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'd kind of gotten used to it, but this was like the first proper, like, decent board. That, yeah. Yeah. How do you find the double kingpins fit into your riding style yeah to be honest it's one of those things hey like um yeah i don't know it's 
it's real. Yeah, it's hard to think of not having the double kingpin now. Really, you know what I mean? Because at first you always think, oh, it's you're not going to have the stability, but it's super stable. You know what I mean? Especially once you put that. Once I put those performance bushings on, it made a huge difference in the stability, and then the agility's there. So I think it's just yeah, it's. I don't know. I wouldn't go back to a single kingpin now. Yeah, I think if you actually like when you get back on an electric board with a traditional kingpin, it feels real heavy. To it, feel, it feels real strange. Like yeah, yeah. every time I do it, I'm sure you get used to it after you put a bit of time on. But every time I ride someone's board, I fall off the side of it when I try and yeah, turn. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's actually what happened to me. I um, went from a double kingpin back to a um, street surfer and. I went to turn and because there's less agility, I just fell like at like 30 kilometers an hour straight to my tailbone, eh? Yeah, nice. Yeah. That's, that feels <laughs> real good. I didn't spill my beer, but yeah. I didn't spill my beer. But um, yeah, it's just that lack of agility, you know what I mean? But that's the best thing about the double kingpin is you've got agility and stability at the same time. And if you don't have enough stability for the speeds that you want to go, all you got to do is just put your bushings up to a high density and then you know what i mean you get the, the stability from that and easy happy days yeah sick i reckon that's going to do us for today but you're local like you live 20 minutes from hq i really want to start talking to you about um like the the stuff skaters know more about than some people in the electric world like bushings the uh, durometers the shape of wheels all those little bits and pieces i think you could offer some like super good insight for some of the listeners so we'll have to get you back in sometime yeah, yeah for sure sounds yeah. good legend all right thank you um yeah cheers for your first podcast go and follow him electric skateboarding you flip by film we'll put all the links in the uh in the description thank you super nervous but had heaps of fun and yeah let's do it again <laughs> see you next time